So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about the concept of preventing prostate cancer. I think that people think you can prevent prostate cancer through diet, through lifestyle. Um, there's a lot of rumors on the internet about, you know, things that men should do and should not do in order to prevent prostate cancer. And it can get quite frustrating, even for me, just having young friends who are now getting their PSA tested because they think if they do X, Y, and Z, that they're not going to get prostate cancer. And I just realized that there is a lot of misinformation out there and we want to bring clarity to the situation. So in, in the total of everything that is prostate cancer when it comes to patients from all around the world and different types of genetics and all sorts of things, is there really a way to prevent prostate cancer? Uh, there's no way to completely prevent prostate cancer. It's, uh, there are uh, actions that can reduce the risk. And it, is, uh, it has been disappointing. I've had patients come to me with prostate cancer that basically did everything right, and they were sort of surprised that they came down with prostate cancer. And my um, response to them is, let's say someone's coming to me in their 70s and they've developed a prostate cancer and, and uh, they've been doing the diet, they've been exercising, they've been pursuing all the measures that they could to uh, optimize their health. They had achieved that, all doing everything just perfectly. And uh, my response to them, although I don't have preescent knowledge, is that, well, you may have very well have postponed something that was uh, inevitable through your good behaviors. That's probably true because of what we know about the impact of diet on prostate cancer uh, in terms of its progression. When people are diagnosed with prostate cancer, that is sort of the tip of the iceberg. We know that prostate cancer is latent in the male population, and there's a lot of people that have prostate cancer, don't know it, and maybe we'll never need to know it. It's just a low-grade process that's sitting there in the gland. So being diagnosed with prostate cancer is, is partly the behavior of the people, and it's also how aggressively do people pursue getting diagnosed. Studies now are coming out showing that if people don't wait for their PSA to go up to, say, three or four, which is the usual threshold for starting to look for problems, but actually do an MRI even when the PSA is normal, you can find prostate cancer in the population. It's that common and it starts even with PSAs lower than three. Fortunately, most of these are small, early stage cancers and it's debatable whether you even want to know about them. So to get to your question of can we prevent prostate cancer, the answer is no, we can't prevent it. We can reduce the risk of, of prostate cancer becoming clinically significant and uh, creating a problem by pursuing, in particular, a good diet. And the diet that seems to be efficacious is a, is a more vegetarian-type uh, approach. Uh, this is most starkly illustrated in the incidence of prostate cancer in the Far East, where they don't have the same access as the Western diet to you know, beef and all the animal protein that we eat. People that are living in the Far East have much lower incidence of being diagnosed with prostate cancer than people do in the West. However, when these uh, Asian people, we know it's not a genetic issue, it's a, it's a diet issue, when they move to the Western world, their incidence of prostate cancer starts to go up. The bottom line is clearly a vegetarian, more vegetarian-based diet as opposed to an animal protein diet is associated with a lower risk of developing prostate cancer. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you, you can donate at pcri.org forward slash donate. We want to get these videos out to millions of men around the world and you can help us do that. Now back to this video on prevention. Prostate cancer can be present even when the PSA is normal. And so in screening for prostate cancer, then does that mean that men starting at 40 years old should get MRIs of their prostates? No, I don't think it's necessary. The, the good news is, and this is why active surveillance is so effective, prostate cancers don't need to be diagnosed at their inception to cure them. Other cancers, lung cancers, pancreas cancers, these do need to be diagnosed at the very earliest pos uh, possible stage to have any hope of a cure. Prostate cancer is far more forgiving and a postponement of several years for, um, for diagnosing it uh, will almost always still result in the ability to have curative therapy. It's, it's overkill to think that we have to catch prostate cancer at the very earliest stage. And PSA, I think, is a wonderful initial indication. Uh, they recommend also that people have a digital rectal exam to make sure that low PSA producing tumors are not diagnosed late. The chances that an MRI is going to pick up a high-grade cancer at an earlier stage when uh, the PSA is low uh, is very small and 
the, even the high-grade cancers in the prostate cancer realm um, are still curable when they're caught, when they're localized. So I wouldn't uh, advocate a policy of starting to do MRIs in everybody. It's probably going to create more headaches than, than uh, more and more people will be diagnosed with these low-grade cancers. It'll create a lot of unnecessary anxiety and fear when uh, the majority of them are never going to turn into anything problematic. So that leads me to two different questions then. What is the percentage likelihood that you would be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but then also what is the percentage likelihood that it'll be low grade like Leeson 6? About one in six men are diagnosed with prostate cancer in the United States uh, and throughout their lifetime. Men that are being diagnosed in the United States uh, every year is somewhere between 180 and 220,000 men a year and about half of them are at least in six. So are there certain types of races, is it African Americans, Caucasians, Asian men, um, are, is any genetic you know, makeup more susceptible to prostate cancer than another? Yes, uh, African Americans do have a higher incidence of prostate cancer. Even after Asians move to the Western world, they tend to have a lower incidence of prostate cancer than Caucasians do. So African Americans, Caucasians, Asians, uh, from most likely to least likely, the question is to whether it's genetic or simply societal lifestyle style, dietary behavior um, is still unanswered, but it appears to be more of a societal lifestyle thing than a genetic difference. A big trend that I'm seeing right now, not only in my generation that's on TikTok and all of that, but in Yahoo News and a lot of these major news um, outlets is they're talking that frequent ejaculation can prevent prostate cancer. And then I've even seen some articles saying that um, you know, frequent ejaculation can cause prostate cancer. So what is the truth of the situation and does it have anything to do with it? Well, getting to the truth is quite difficult because the incidence of sexual activity is not universal across the board throughout all age groups. People that are healthier tend to be more sexually active and people that are less healthy tend to be less sexually active. And so it's not hard to see why if you looked at a study uh, that's trying to detail um, survival and outcomes over time, that the people are who are less sexually active are not going to have as good a survival outcome. Unfortunately, the studies that have been done don't, don't control for that, that factor. They just looked at whether or not uh, people were having more or less sexual activity and what their longevity was. And so it's easy to conclude that uh, the more sexually active, the healthier, the more vibrant people are going to live longer. And to say that it's only because they're having more frequent sexual activity is the reason they live longer is ridiculous. But this sort of crummy science is brought out because it, sex always gets a lot of attention and uh, the, it's the only data they have. And because it was some crummy journal decided to publish this information, the media will take it and run with it. And then it gets repeated over and over again by people who have never even looked at the source documents. The source documents are really weak. So I think there isn't any really good science that addresses this question. Uh, I don't uh, have any opinion as to uh, trying to prevent prostate cancer with more frequent sexual activity. I do joke that if you think the excuse will work with your wife, sure, use the, use the information. But, um, you know, if your wife is uh, not as interested in sexual activity as you are. But the, uh, the underlying science is just really of poor quality. So today we talked about prostate cancer prevention. I think that maybe some of you who are watching this video have already been diagnosed with prostate cancer, and I just want you to know that there really wasn't a way to prevent that. I know that you're in a situation that's really hard and prostate cancer is so intense, and you're in this whole new situation that has been quite life-changing. But going back in the past and thinking about ways I could have prevented it, I hope you don't have any guilt over that. One in six men get prostate cancer, and there really are not clear studies showing what the cause is. I wish we knew the cause, because if we knew the cause, maybe we can come out with even more direct treatments to treat it. Now, the truth is there's a lot of new information that has come out in the last 10 years. And there is so much new technology when it comes to treating prostate cancer, screening for prostate cancer, and even imaging. So we're in a really good place because now with even PSMA, we can see where prostate cancer is all over the body. So I just wanted to take a moment to encourage you that if you have already been diagnosed with prostate cancer, you know, there's a lot of information out there. Do your research, talk to your physicians, and, you know, really make sure that you are optimizing your health. Create a side effect mitigation plan if you've already chosen a treatment. You know, really make sure that you are thinking of yourself in a big picture, holistic standpoint. And if you have side effects that you really don't like, we need to work on treating those and dealing with those as much as treating the prostate cancer. It's very important to, to make sure your quality of life is a um, priority. 
Now, if you have not been diagnosed with prostate cancer and you are looking at this from a preventative standpoint, yes, diet does have an effect. But I think the most important thing you can do is get checked, get your PSA checked every year, you know, get a DRE to see if your urologist can feel if there is a lump, that's very important. And between those two things, just be faithful in doing so. You know, it's not good. There, unfortunately, there isn't a, an herb or a, you know, anything that's really been proven scientifically to prevent prostate cancer. But in the meantime, getting checked and making sure there's early intervention is the best bet that we can have in making sure you, that, you know, prostate cancer doesn't become something that can greatly affect you. Now, if you, um, if you need more information, contact our helpline. If you have specific questions about this video, you can contact our helpline and they can give you more information there. So you can do so at pcri.org forward slash helpline. They're prostate cancer patients who have already been through this. They've done a ton of research and they've been trained by our medical oncology team. They can help provide information to you so that you have better outcomes with your medical team. Remember, please get second opinions. Please advocate for yourself. Please get, you know, um, the help you need. Emotional support, maybe joining an online support group, maybe talking to our helpline. Whatever it is, make sure that if you have a need, you are making that a priority. You're not alone. You're very important. And I hope you have a great week.